In this video, I'm going to go through solutions to part 071, exercises loops.m. Link to that file is in the video description. As with all the exercises, I suggest that you attempt all of them before looking at these solution videos. All the code in this video is going to work in Octave as it works here in MATLAB. Unless I specifically say otherwise, I may note a couple places where there's going to be some differences. All right, the first exercise is to write a for loop that displays the square root of all the even numbers from 20 to 40. So we might say 4, and then some variable, k is traditional in MATLAB, even numbers from 20 to 40, 20, colon 2, colon 40. And then we just need to display them out according to this question. So we'll display square root of k. And there we go. I think I wanted this single space. I didn't run my formatting here. And there we go. MATLAB indents numbers differently depending on if they have a decimal place or if they don't. That's why this looks a little weird. But we're not too concerned about how exactly the output works. And that satisfies the question. The following code displays which of the following. Try and answer it without just running the code. Okay, so we got a vector v right here. We have a very typical for loop where we're setting k equal to 1 to the length of v. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in this case. And then we're displaying out v at position k. So this is equivalent to simply doing the following. It's equivalent to this right here. For k equals v, each time the loop goes around, k is going to be equal to the next value in v, and we're just going to display it out. However, there are some advantages to this, and you certainly need to know how to do it, because a lot of times we need to know the index of a particular value along with the value, and that's what we're going to be able to access here, because k is going to be the position of each subsequent value in v. However, we're not displaying out the positions, we're displaying out the values. This b right here is correct, and if I run it, that's the results that we see. In the previous question, you wrote that the following code prints either A or B. What would you change to print the other option? So what you would change is just right in here, we could just print K. So the correct answer is B. No, sorry, A. A right here. So the correct answer is A right there. Because K, the way it's set up, is the index of each value in V in order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if we run it, there it is right there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, with the change that I just made. Write a for loop that loops over the following vector named inches and generates a new vector named feet by dividing each value by 12. Now, again, the best way to do this would just be to say feet equals inches divided by 12, and there we go, there's our vector, we're all done. However, you need to know how to use for loops. This is for loop practice, so let's do it as a for loop. I'm going to again use k from 1 through the length of inches in this case. And then feet at position k is going to equal inches at position k divided by 12. And I'll display it out transposed just so it's easier to read. And there we go. Another addition that we could make, what's suggested by this warning here, is that we could pre-allocate feet. We actually know how large it needs to be. So we can just say feet is a vector of perhaps zeros, doesn't really matter what we started off as, with one row and length of inches number of columns. So that's a pre-allocation step for efficiency. And we run it and we get the exact same result. It does run faster. For a very small example like this, you probably wouldn't notice a difference. But if we were doing some very, very large project, that would be helpful. So this exercise comes from the book MATLAB for Engineers, 5th edition, and it's asking us to write a for loop to count up how many of these values are greater than 30. We're going to need a count variable. So let's just create that right off the bat. That's going to be separate from our loop. And then we'll loop through each value in x. I'm just going to say k equals x. And then if k is greater than 30, we'll increase the count. End the if, end the for, display the count, and I think that'll do it. Great. There are four values in this vector that are greater than 30. Do the exact same thing we just did, but vectorized. In other words, without using a for loop. So probably the best way to do this is to sum up x greater than 30. Another thing that we can do is we can do the length of find the values in x that are greater than 30. But that's a little bit more typing. Either of those will work. 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. It's all good. In this comment, answer the question, when a for loop loops over a matrix, what values are printed on each iteration of the loop? So for a matrix, 
On the first iteration of the loop, the first column is printed. On the second iteration of the loop, the second column of the matrix is printed, then the third, then the fourth, for however many columns there are. Usually we'll use our for loops with vectors and it'll just be one number at a time, but perhaps you want to do it with a matrix, but you'll do it on a per column basis, as most things are in MATLAB, per column, same in octave. Fill in the blank to complete a for loop that creates a vector named v containing the following values, 2, 4, 6, 8. So we've got an index that starts at 1, we've got a value variable that's going to start at 2 and go by 2s up to 8, so the first time through, value is 2, and then the second time through, value is 4, and then 6, and then 8. And then v at position blank, that's what we need to fill in, equals value. And then index goes up by 1. So the solution here is index. And if I run it, there it is, 2, 4, 6, 8. Obviously, there are vastly easier ways to do this. In fact, just all by itself, v equals that is a better way to get those numbers into the vector. However, understanding this is useful, especially for while loops where we might need to use an index such as this. What would happen if we put value right here? Just as an experiment, it's good to experiment with our code. Well, we would get the 2, 4, 6, and 8, but we'd also get a bunch of zeros because we'd be putting the 2 in at position 2, the 4 in at position 4. And what about the values in between? Well, MATLAB would just fill them in with zeros, which is not what we want, so index is what we'd want to use here. Fill in the blank to complete a for loop that sums up a total of all the numbers in the vector named amounts. So we've got a total variable starting at zero. This for loop is looping over the positions in amounts. Index is going to first be one, and then two, and then three, and then four. So we don't want to put index here. We want to put amounts at position index to add in 10, then 20, then 30, then 40. So if I run it now, great, that works fantastic. If instead I put in indexes here, that's not really what we want. That's just going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, which is 10. Write a while loop that sums up the powers of 2 until the sum is greater than 1,000. Okay, so we should have a total variable to add these all up. And perhaps we also want a power variable, which I will start at 0 because the first power is 2 to the 0, and then 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, and so on. And then while the total is less than or equal to a thousand. And I know it said until the sum is greater, but until is inherently a form of negation. Until the sum means while not that sum. So while that sum is less than or equal to a thousand. I'm also avoiding using the variable named sum because sum is a MATLAB function. I don't want to conflict with the existing sum function because who knows, I might want to use it in my code and I don't want there to be any confusion, so I need to use some other variable name. And then we'll set total equal to 2 raised to the power of power. Nope, sorry, we'll add to the existing total 2 to the power. And then we also need to increase the power. And at the very end, we'll display out the total. And actually, I think I should unsuppress this just so we can see the total grow along the way. All right, so there we go, adding up those totals, and there is that final result right there and that looks correct. The following code is a solution to an exercise from the book MATLAB for Engineers, which displays a table of inches to feet conversions. We want to translate this while loop code into a for loop. So let's run it first. All right, so there's our table right there. This code will not work in octave, but the only part that won't work is the table. So if you display it out like using an fprintf, you display out the same data, that can work. It's just that the table function doesn't exist in octave. And scroll on down because we've got a start to the code right here where we can just fill in our for loop translation. Now this is similar to what we did before, so uh, hopefully it's not too hard. Let's create a for loop and k is going to be 1 through the length of inches. And then feet at position k is going to be equal to inches at position k divided by 12. And I think that might be it. And yep, that works perfectly. And we can go up and compare to the while loop right here. Basically, we didn't need this, we didn't need this, and we didn't need this comparison. The for loop takes care of those lines for us. All we really needed was this right here, and then the setup of the for loop itself. Continuing on down. The following code is a solution to another exercise from the same book, which sums up the elements of matrix X, then uses the sum function to verify the results, translate the for loop to a while loop. So now instead of going from while to for, we're going from for to while, and again, scrolling on down, we've got a setup for the code 
and we just need to put our while loop in here. Now it's harder to go from a for loop to a while loop. We need to create our own index and start it off typically at one because we're indexing into that first value in the vector. And we want to say while we're not finished with the vector. So while the index is less than the length of x, actually it's going to be less than or equal to, which you need to get used to if you're familiar with other programming languages. Other languages you would just use a less than because indexing starts at zero, but in MATLAB, indexing starts at one, so we need a less than or equal to. And then we'll have, in fact, I'll just scroll up slightly. I'll just copy this with slight modification because instead of plus k, what we're going to say is plus x at position index. And then we need to write the line of code that increases the index. It's not going to be done for us. That's what we got to write in for the while loop. Now, let me actually run this code up here and test it. All right, 237. Now let's run my while loop code. We should get the exact same stuff. And there it is. Fill in the blank to complete a for loop that counts up the total number of negative values in a vector named sales. Sales is not provided. So if we want to test this, we should write our own, which I encourage you to do. I am just going to mash my keyboard and then I'm going to make a couple of these negative. All right, and then counting up the values that are negative. All we need to do right here is increase the count. We're already looping through sales. I like this convention of using the singular sale set equal to the plural vector sales. I think that's a good reminder that this is going to be one value at a time from this vector. And if that value is less than zero, we'll increase the count and we'll display it out at the end. And we should get three because that's how many negatives I put in. And there it is right there. We also get a lot of other output because something is not suppressed. I think that line, yeah, because the sales line, I didn't suppress that. But if I run it again, now I just get the three. Fill in the blank to complete a for loop that copies all the odd values from a vector named numbers into a vector named odds. Neither of these vectors is provided, so we'll need to create them. I mean, odds is kind of provided right here, so we really just need numbers. So might as well fill it in. Again, I'm just gonna kind of mash my keyboard. Of course, I don't know what the correct answer will be since I'm doing that, but uh, we'll figure that out afterwards. And now this is the line we need to modify. So we're checking here if the number is odd. And if it is, we'll both increase our count. And then in our new odds vector at position count, we will put this new odd value. Well, how do we get access to that odd value? Well, it comes out of the vector named numbers and at position index. So instead of blank right here, we got numbers at position index and that should do it. All right, so the values that are odd, 1, 3, 35, and 85, and that is correct. The following for loop is identical to which of the following while loops. So for this one, we've got a for loop, and one of the following while loops is a correct translation of the for to a while. So first, what are we dealing with here? k goes from 1 through 20, and then we're displaying out k. So it's just going to display out 1 through 20, and let's just go in order and see what we get. All right, k starts out at 1, while k is less than 20, display k, and then go up by 1. That might at first glance look good, but what is missing here? What's going to be missing is the 20. It won't actually display out the 20. And you can't actually copy this into the command window. You just run it, and you see right there, it doesn't go all the way to 20. Whereas this one actually does, our, our starting point does go up to 20. So that is actually not correct. It's close, though. All right, how about B? Well, K equals one through 20, display K, K equals K plus one. This is just wrong. This is a mixture of the formatting for a for loop with some of the code for a while loop. Not correct, so not that one. How about C here? K starts off at one, while K is less than or equal to 20, display out K, K goes up by one. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it, but let's just, you know, do a CLC and then verify it over here. All right, certainly goes up to 20. Does it start off all right? Yep, it does. 1 through 20 right there. Let's just briefly see why this one's wrong. So k is at 1, while k, yeah, this is just the wrong formatting right here. So that is incorrect. So c was the correct answer. Evaluate the truth of the following three statements. 1. Any program you can write with a for loop can be written with a while loop. That is true. While loops are the more general loop. 2. An if statement is basically a while loop that runs at most once. In my opinion, that's true, right? If you've got an if statement and you just replace the word if with while, like you're going to get a different program, but like syntactically, it is correct. Three, continue ends a loop, break ends the currently running program. 
That is not correct. Continue skips to the next iteration of a loop. Break ends a loop. So one and two are true. Uh, C, again, is the correct answer. And that wraps us up for the loops exercise.